Good morning. I am Technical Sergeant William Lewis, military training instructor, and I will be your narrator for today's ceremony. As the flights move into position, and for the safety and comfort of those around you, we ask that you refrain from entering the retreat pad and re remain in your respective seating area when taking photos during the ceremony. Do not stand or sit in the stairways unless entering or exiting the grandstand. Additionally, we ask that you do not stand at the bottom of the grandstand, as well as the arena drill pad. At the conclusion of the ceremony, you may proceed onto the retreat pad after the flights are dismissed. Please be cautious when ascending and descending the bleachers. Utilize the handrails and watch for tripping, slipping, and falling hazards. Restroom facilities are located in the reception center and to the right of the flagpole. During this morning ceremony, smoking and the consumption of alcoholic beverages is not permitted. At this time, please silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. Thank you and enjoy today's ceremony. In the military, ceremonies are held to accord distinctive honors to national symbols or individuals on special occasions. These ceremonies are also used to display the proficiency and state of training in a command and to promote teamwork and pride in the organization. They also contribute to public morale by displaying symbolically the strength and unity of the military in support of the nation. All of the movements that you will observe today are known as drill. The purpose of drill is to enable a commander or non-commissioned officer, such as the military training instructor, the ability to move their units from one place to another in an orderly manner. That aid in training by instilling discipline and habits of precision in response to the leader's orders and to provide for the development of all leaders in the practice of commanding formation. To maintain the proper decorum and respect for events such as this, we ask that you abide by the following standards while you are here. First, there will be times that you will be asked to stand for the invocation, the playing of the national anthem, the Air Force song, and the reciting of the Airmen's Creed. Second, we ask that you remain silent during these times, reflecting on the price that has been paid for our freedom. Third, we ask that you pay respect to the flag during the national anthem. Military members and veterans in uniform will stand at attention and render a salute. Civilians should stand and place their right hand over their heart. Veterans and military members not in uniform may render a salute or place their right hand over their heart. After the last note of the national anthem, you may return your hand to your side. Thank you and enjoy today's ceremony. From, now marching into position, from the 331st Training Squadron, Flight 053, led by Technical Sergeant Shandrika Goodson, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Hope, Arkansas. Flight 052, led by Technical Sergeant Luis Porras Vargas, Military Training Instructor Trainer, Hometown Denver, Colorado. From the 326 Training Squadron, Flight 051, led by Technical Sergeant Margaret Siguncove, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Benicia, California. Flight 050, led by Technical Sergeant Luke Decia, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Reno, Nevada. Academic Excellence Flight, Flight 049, led by Staff Sergeant Zachary Bradley, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Fort Walton Beach, Florida.
BT Excellence Flight, Flight 048, led by Technical Sergeant Shawana Fortson, Military Training Instructor Trainer, Hometown Valdosta, Georgia. Air Force Basic Military Training conducts graduation events over the course of two days to celebrate the accomplishments of our newest airmen and guardians. These events recognize their transition into the profession of arms. We acknowledge the tradition of honor and the legacy of valor provided by those who came before us and inspire us still today. We would also like to thank the family and friends for their continued support that these graduates will be continuing on as they serve our great nation in the years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Morgan. I invite you to pray with me. Almighty God, we rejoice this rainy but glorious morning in the accomplishments of these soon-to-be airmen. We thank you for the loving support of their family and friends who cheered them on through this journey many of whom have traveled from around this country to celebrate with them today. And we thank you too for the investment of time and energy from their MTIs over the many long days of BMT. We pray with your help that this is the dawn of a great era as these young men and women go on to become the leaders and heroes of their generation, taking on the mantle of those who now serve in our Air Force. Bless them with safety and prosperity as they continue a long tradition defending freedom and justice for all, amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to today's basic military training graduation ceremony. We would like to introduce our distinguished guest, beginning with the host for today's ceremony. The Commander, Air Force Basic Military Training and 1989 graduate of Basic Military Training, Colonel Billy Wilson, Jr. A senior enlisted leader, Air Force, basic military training, and 2003 graduate of basic military training, Chief Master Sergeant Dan Anderson. The guest speakers, the commander, 321st Training Squadron, and 1999 graduate of basic military training, Lieutenant Colonel Rodolfo Orozco, accompanied by his wife, Angela. The Senior Enlisted Leader, 321st Training Squadron, and 2000 graduate of basic military training, Chief Master Sergeant Valeria Andrade. Also in attendance with us today, the Commander, 19th Air Force, Major General Clark Quinn. The Command Chief, 19th Air Force, and 1994 graduate of basic military training, Chief Master Sergeant Justin Aptekar. Although time does not permit us to introduce all of our distinguished guests, the 737 Training Group is proud to welcome each of you. We hope you enjoy today's ceremony. This week, we have a special opportunity to recognize one additional and significant achievement demonstrating the dedication of four of our graduates who are led by Technical Sergeant John Shields, Military Drill and Ceremonies Non-Commissioned Officer, Hometown, Kenston, North Carolina. Today's recognition is made possible by a partnership between the Department of Defense and Department of Homeland Security to allow active duty service members to become citizens under the naturalization at basic training initiative. To be eligible, a member of the armed forces must pass a comprehensive application process administered by the Department of Homeland Security, including a background check and personal interview to demonstrate high moral character and their knowledge of the English language. Applicants are also tested on U.S. history and government. Please hold your applause until all names have been announced. The Air Force is proud to recognize 
Jorge Valdez Rodriguez, country of origin, Mexico. Epoch Hadell, country of origin, Nepal. Alexis A. Largo, country of origin, Philippines. Saffron Miller, country of origin, United Kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, please help us congratulate the newest citizens of the United States of America. Musical support for this morning's ceremony is provided by graduates from Flight 046 and 047, performing under the direction of retired Master Sergeant Samuel Johnson, Master Military Training Instructor, hometown Stratford, Connecticut. These individuals have been hand-selected to perform for today's ceremony, in addition to completing all basic training syllabus and training requirements. Drum and Bugle Corps members commit additional training hours for practice throughout their weeks of training. Their extra effort and commitment demonstrate teamwork and the Air Force Corps value, service before self. With each Drum and Bugle Corps performance, they honor the long-standing tradition of live music at formal military ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Master Sergeant Andrade will now come forward and address our graduating class. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the home of Air Force Basic Military Training. I would like to start off by taking an opportunity to say thank you to the family members and loved ones who have encouraged and supported these outstanding men and women standing before us. Your support has been essential to your airmen's success here at basic training and will continue to be necessary as they continue on their journey to serve in the world's greatest Air Force. Thank you. And now to our veterans in the crowd. If able, please stand. Thank you for your dedicated service to the defense of our country. Your dedicated service to the defense of our country and to devoting your life to a purpose greater than yourself is much appreciated. These airmen we celebrate today and the airmen all around the world supporting our freedoms are standing on your shoulders. It is because of your love for our country that many of these airmen are carrying on your legacy and serving today. Thank you. Now I would like to take time to recognize an incredible group of dedicated, individuals to training our nation's warriors. Our military training instructors of the 737th Training Group are the first encounter of what true military professionalism is for our airmen and have played a critical role in mentoring, developing, and shaping our newest graduates to meet the future needs of the world's greatest Air Force. In just seven and a half weeks, they have transformed these airmen into the impressive men and women we see before us today. Our airmen are better trained than ever before to deal with the ever-changing challenges at home and abroad. It's a demanding job and one that you have done exceptionally well. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask that you give a round of applause to this dedicated team of professionals.
And now to our graduates. Congratulations. Each and every one of you came here unsure and unaware of how to meet our standards and our expectations. You have made it through seven and a half weeks of rigorous training, overcome many challenges, and have made the transformation from citizens to airmen. Congratulations. You now join the ranks of, of less than 1% of Americans who have raised their right hand in defense of our country and the guiding principles we as Americans and members of the profession of arms hold so dear. As you begin your Air Force journey, I want to impart on you three principles that have helped me become successful over the past 23 years serving this great nation. First, treat each other with dignity and respect and foster an environment of diversity and inclusion. The men and women serving in our United States Air Force are representatives of the diversity of our nation. Embrace the unique experiences, perspectives, and talents of your fellow airmen. Our airmen are our greatest strengths and the leverage we need to continue to overcome countless global security threats. Two, be great now. You must take every opportunity to deliver your very best. Do not just talk about it or think about it. Start now. You may think that it's early in your careers and as airmen, your contributions are insignificant, but this is completely false. We need you today at this rank in whatever job you are placed in to go the extra mile, to get the job done right, to take additional measures to help your fellow wingmen regardless of you receiving recognition. The cumulative efforts of striving to be the very best over time are profound. And your actions to do great in the big things and in the small things will teach you a great deal about yourself, provide you with the experience to handle unique challenges, and a reputation for being an indispensable member to any team. When that promotion or leadership role comes your way, you will be prepared to lead your team through any adversary. adversity. Lastly, be coachable. Be willing to take tough feedback and learn from those experiences. Understand that the people care about you and your development and they want to see you succeed. Be committed to holding yourself accountable, breaking old habits and making lasting changes to ensure you, your and your team's success. Airmen, I leave you with this. You are joining a team of professionals dedicated to integrity, service and excellence. We are in unprecedented times facing unique challenges and we need you to continue to overcome, adapt, and thrive in an unpredictable world with unpredictable circumstances. During these times, the American public looks to you as a beacon of hope to calm the waters of uncertainty and I have no doubt you are up for the challenge. Your will, desire, and dedication to your country and a purpose greater than yourself has brought you here and will continue to be what drives you and motivates you moving forward. Today, you begin to write your next chapter in your Air Force story. And in the words of our greatest military leaders, Colin Powell, always remember, all work is honorable. Always do your best because someone is watching. Whatever your path, I encourage you to make the most out of it because someone is looking to you to set the example and lead the way. Airmen, I thank you for committing yourself to serving your country, and I'm proud to stand alongside you today as a fellow wingman. I hereby acknowledge your completion of all graduation requirements and have recommended to Colonel Wilson and Chief Master Sergeant Anderson you receive your coveted airman's coin, which signifies your transition today from trainees to airmen. Congratulations. Military training instructors, you may proceed. At this part of the ceremony, the military training instructors will distribute the venerable airman's coin and for the first time, distinct Space Force coins to our Space Force graduates.
The lore of military coins has many colorful suspected origins. However, a popular story stems from World War I, where American volunteers formed flying squadrons in France during the Great War. One of the volunteers was a wealthy lieutenant who took great pride in his service and had medallions cast in bronze, with his squadron's emblem on them. He gave those medallions to every member of his unit. Not long after, one of the pilots was shot down behind enemy lines and was captured by a German patrol. The German forces confiscated the pilot's possessions except for the pilot's medallion that he wore around his neck. While in confinement in a small French village, the captured pilot took advantage of a nighttime bombardment by the Allies. He donned civilian clothes and escaped after crossing the front lines to safety. He came across a French outpost where he was initially thought to be a saboteur until he showed them his unit coin. The French forces recognized the unit emblem and instead of any harsher treatment, he received a bottle of wine. Today, several military units have developed their own coins and specific rules for them. Many organizations give out their unit coins to recognize outstanding performances and achievements. The coins the airmen and space professionals receive today are unique in that they originate here at the gateway to the Air Force and are only given to those who complete this rigorous course of instruction. On one side of the airman's coin, the original emblem of the Air Force resides as envisioned by General Henry Hap Arnold, one of the first military aviators and later commander of the Army Air Forces in World War II. Beneath the emblem, the year 1947, the birth date of the United States Air Force, and around the rim of the coin, the core values of the Air Force, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Inscribed on the other side of the coin is the newly recognized emblem of the Air Force, a symbol that honors the heritage of our past and represents the promise of our future. The emblem retains the core elements of the Henry Hap Arnold emblem, the Arnold wings, and the star within a circle. The modern effect of the emblem reflects our air and space force today and into the future. Inscribed in a half circle above the contemporary Air Force emblem is the Air Force motto, Aim High, Fly, Fight, Win. And on the border of the coin, a reminder to all who see this is inscribed awarded on the occasion of becoming an airman in the world's greatest air force. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Orozco will now come forward and address our graduating class. 
Awesome. Welcome, family, friends, to the gateway of the U.S. Air Force. It's great to see so many of you supporting your airmen, especially on this cold and rainy Texas December day. Over the last seven and a half weeks, the 316 airmen before you have learned that no one succeeds alone. They are more resilient, they're more adaptive, and more equipped to conquer the challenges our nation will face into an unknown future against formidable adversaries. These airmen have learned that we fight as a team. But this is just the start, airmen. There is so much more to learn, and it will get harder. More will be required of you. Embrace these realities and persevere in spite of them. Deli believe in the power within yourself to make a difference. You are never just an airman. Each of you is on the cusp of a future filled with promise and hope. The opportunities in front of you are boundless. Now is the time to be great. And you are not just meant to replenish or regenerate the Air Force. You are meant to be the upgrades. By design, your MTIs have poured hundreds of years of their collective experience into each of you to make our Air Force and our nation better. Do not accept the status quo. Raise the standard of excellence in all you do. It is my belief that you will accept the challenge and carry on in such a manner that your work will be a credit to yourself and to our nation. You are now members of the profession of arms. Teammates on the most lethal fighting force this world has ever known. I know you're ready. Go out and make us proud. Once again, welcome to the world's greatest Air Force. I look forward to serving alongside you as we continue to deliver combat air power for America. Congratulations on completing basic military training. Good luck and Godspeed. One team. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Orozco. At this time, we would like to take this opportunity to recognize basic military training's most outstanding performer, someone who demonstrated their ability to successfully navigate all assessments, testing their physical abilities, academic aptitude, and adaptability to the military environment through multiple progress checks. This airman has surpassed all others in challenges of training and has earned the distinction of being the top graduate of this class. The top graduate is from the 326 Training Squadron, Flight 050, Airman Ellie Radomski. She is from Tucson, Arizona, and joined the Air Force to become a Fighter Aircraft Integrated Avionics Technician. In the stands cheering her, our mother Carrie and father Scott. Her recruiter is Technical Sergeant Lopez from the 162nd Force Support Squadron, Tucson, Arizona. Please stand as a sign of unity as our top graduate leads us through the Airman's Creed. Instructors, place your flights at attention. Thank you. Please be seated. Instructors, place your flights at ease. This morning, we honor our heritage of military customs and traditions as we welcome our newest airmen into the ranks of the Department of the Air Force. There are two purposes for this morning's retreat ceremony. A retreat ceremony is a solemn event conducted at every United States military installation around the globe. 
it signifies the end of the official duty day, and today is symbolic of the end of training for our graduates. But more importantly, it is to pay respect to our nation's flag. When we offer our respect for our flag and to our national anthem, we have an oppor opportunity to reflect on the democratic principles that have made our nation great. The meaning of freedom, dignity of the individual, the pursuit of happiness, and national unity all come to mind when you think of our flag. It is the symbol of our nation to the world. Military members have a special bond with the flag. These airmen are part of the flag's tradition because they symbolize the spirit and sacrifices of the military and dedication to the defense of this great nation and the principles it represents. When we salute the flag as it is lowered, we ask you to think. Think about the flag flying over Arlington and other national cemeteries. Think about the flag being carried into combat by service members who precede us. Think about the freedom Americans enjoy today. Freedom without precedent in the history of the world. The men and women who stand before you today represent the projection of strength behind our flag. Our flag security detail consists of members from the 321st Training Squadron, led by Technical Sergeant Austin Craig. Our Commander of Airmen is Master Sergeant Emma Hoffman. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the sounding of retreat and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem.
The flag stands for peace, honor, truth, justice, and freedom. In the armed forces of the United States, during the ceremony of retreat, the flag is lowered, folded in a triangle fold, and kept under watch throughout the night as a tribute to our nation's honored dead. The next morning, it is brought out at the ceremony of Reveille. The flag has been torn to strips and used as bandages for wounded combatants on the battlefield. It has been placed in the trembling arms of a grieving parent at the grave of their fallen son or daughter. It is flown at half-staff to honor our military members. The flag has flown in every battle of every war for more than 200 years. It is flown at Valley Forge, Shiloh, and Gettysburg. It was there at San Juan Hill, the trenches of France, in the Argonne Forest, Anzio, Rome, on the beaches of Normandy. It was waved at Okinawa, Korea, Vietnam, Somalia, Kuwait, Iraq, and in Afghanistan. The flag has been burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of countries that America has helped set free. Yet, it remains invincible. Please remain standing for the playing and singing of the United States Air Force song. Congratulations on achieving this historic milestone that marks the beginning of your career. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seating area. The graduates will be dismissed momentarily. Families and graduates in the Drum and Bugle Corps are asked to wait for their graduates on the north side of the West Bleachers while they secure their equipment. We ask that you refrain from running onto the retreat pad and please use caution when, ascending, when descending the bleachers. Down pass ends at 20 hundred hours. When dropping off graduates, please stay in your vehicle. Family members are not authorized to enter any training area. Thank you and enjoy your stay at the 37th Training Wing, Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas. <laughs> 